uh, tonight uh, I have yeah a fantastic team here and oh, I, I, I should try to pronounce your first name uh, Andre he likes to be called Andre but he has just say it Gullmünder. there we go <laughs> 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 and uh, now I haven't totally um, taken it on board that Iceland is has only 350,000 yeah. uh, inhabitants yeah. Yeah. for some reason that had and we were talking about so and also Iceland has very few murders one every two years all our murders are, are just in the books <laughs> <laughs> Now, Andre is also, I, I think it's, um, I, I love writers who are writers, but also try to do good in the world. So Andre is also a member of parliament in Iceland, mm -hmm. wow. and he used to be an editor of the biggest publishing house in Iceland. And, and there are a lot of writers in Iceland, and you're a very well, very well known writer yourself in Iceland. So, yeah, a superstar with a fantastic book. And we just had a discussion about this. Uh, there are a couple of people here, and Andre, they need to show you what they did to the book. Marking, trying to find oh, the yes. yeah. And, um, well, I actually think it's a, just a lovely book where you can just turn the page and you know it's it's all lovely and every now and again you think well it's actually not that lovely but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so joining Andre is the fantastic translator team Björk and Andrew and um, they work in a tandem uh, Björk is actually Icelandic herself so she does the first translation Andrew her husband is uh, English and speaks Icelandic but then does the second uh, draft and hosting tonight is Lucy Popescu. Lucy, I think a lot of you know because she's yeah done a few hostings. Um, she's also coming to our salons. So welcome them, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, like many of you, I'm a regular here, so I'm a little bit sad about my kids' news. What am I going to do without those salons? But also, I know she's going to do a terrific job. And, you know, we need to keep challenging ourselves, don't we? we need to keep moving on. But yeah, I'm, I'm a little sad. Anyway, on to this terrific book. Set in an Icelandic fishing village, Andre's mesmerising And the Wind Sees All contains a dazzling array of voices. It's a riveting exploration of Nordic Huga with a hint of something darker. Stories and gossip infiltrate daily life in the village. The hope, secrets and betrayals of various characters are revealed as they watch newcomer Gata sail by on her bicycle, dressed in a polka dot dress on her way to conduct the local choir. How many of you have read the book? Ah, this is the beauty. <laughs> Um, we're going to start and conclude with a short reading and first off it's going to be in Icelandic and then English and then we'll reverse that at the mm. end. Um, we're going to have a conversation about the book and its translation and there will be a chance at the end to ask questions. So the whole event should last about an hour. Um, of course if you're full of questions then it may run over a little bit but I, I know we all, we all get a bit hungry at a certain point. So can we start <laughs> with um, the readings please? Do I start? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hún kemur af hafi. Hún kemur af hafi og fyrir inn eftir eyri. Þegar degi tekur að halla, sígur þokan hægt inn eftir fyrðinum eins og hún gerir ævinlega á sumrin, snuðra kringum holtin, skimar bak við hóla, líðurinn í þorpið þar sem hún sleikir húshorn og lyfti sér síðan nægilega til að ég geti horft inn í glugga. Ég sé leyndarmálin. Ég sé fólkið elda og bauka, pissa, syngja, þeyja og húka. Sum er gráta, sum er hlusta, sum er stara. Ég sé fólkið æpa í kodda, enda rustli og ónýttum minningum og ég lít ekki undan. 
ég lít aldrei undan. Oh. <laughs> the mist, it comes in off the sea and slides along the spit. Every summer's day it creeps up the fjord as evening approaches, noses around the slopes and foothills and slips into the village where it curls around the boats in the harbour and licks the corners of the houses before lifting itself just enough for me to be able to peep through people's windows. I see the secrets. I see people cooking, peeing, pottering or skulking about. Some weep, some listen, some stare. I see people silent, or screaming into their pillows. I see people throwing out rubbish and useless memories, and I don't look away. I never look away. I see all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to start with a quick question to the translation, to the translators, because I keep hearing this word, Ugar. I even heard it in Crouch End the other day. <laughs> what does it mean? How do you translate Ugar? Hugo. Yeah. Hugo. <laughs> Actually, it's not Icelandic. It's yes. No, it's, it's not Danish. It's, it's not Danish. Danish. Yeah. Right, you use it, yeah? No, yeah. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. No. no. But you, I noticed the word was in, is, was in there, so what was the it's, uh, feeling? It's interesting. I saw a thing um, uh, recently in a paper somewhere. Yeah. Somebody was pointing out that um, to have Hugo you need to have yes. snow and cold mm. weather outside yes. Mm. Yes. and it's when it's horrible outside and cold and nasty and mm. indoors mm. you create this this warm cozy yeah cozy space. and then what you did yeah. use the word cozy so was it not hookah there was a word cozy in there somewhere yeah yes <laughs> but anyway, um, it, Mikey is probably marketing tools. But I, I was, because it's just a word I just keep hearing now. But anyway, now we know. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I tell you about Hugo? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. It, it, it's a Danish word. It's, it's special Danish. It's, it's uh, only the Danish have this word, and only the Danish could have created this word, and only the Danes understand this word. <laughs> and, uh, it, 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 it really means a blend of uh, coziness, and, uh, you know, it, it's a way of life, Hugo, to, to, to tend to yourself, think mm -hmm. about yourself, be nice to yourself, and your, the, the ones nearest to you, and, uh, and it, it's, it's also what, what Andrew says, it's, it's, if it's... Uh, terrible outside, yeah. you create yeah. something, yeah. a space <coughs> inside. Yeah. So if Denmark was a warm country, Hugo would never have <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get on to the book. You've chosen a wonderful array of characters. What inspired you? And are some of these characters based on real people? You know, uh, a small population and you all know each other or related to each other. Um, <laughs> was it hard juggling so many lives, many of them interconnected? At one point, like some of you, I made a kind of like a family tree, but not a family tree, but I wrote all the names down and then made the connections just yeah. to make sure I knew exactly what was what. Yeah. So, yeah, what inspired you? Are they based on real people? And was it hard juggling so many lives? Well, uh, first I'd like to say thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's wonderful to be here. And, uh, and uh, I, I have to say that I, I am never, uh, uh, as a writer, been so close to my readers. I'm I'm not sure where I where I got this idea from to 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 to, to make a book like this. Uh, when I was uh, just a just a boy, I I I I, I, I like to make up stories and and I like to uh, imagine people and, and in much in lives and I've, I've always been been like that it's always been very easy for me to to imagine persons I see persons all the time when I'm falling asleep all sorts of persons come into my head and, and I really don't know what they're doing there mm -hmm. maybe they're asking me to to write their stories or, or something but they are 
inside my head. They're already inside my head. And I think this story was already uh, there when I began writing it. And I'm not sure what triggered it. Uh, Maybe it was uh, we we it, it was written uh, in in the years uh, after we had a uh, as you might know we had a <laughs> terrible <laughs> crash economical <laughs> crash in Iceland and uh, it, things were pretty bad uh, but mostly we had a, we, we we did not have self confidence anymore we we didn't really know who we were. What sort of people were? Are we bad people? Are we, are we a failed nation? That's what we thought. And and I thought maybe I could try to pick up some you know sticks and and, and try to write something about that without without uh, making it too uh, rosy. But but I, I I I wanted to find some something Icelandic, some Icelandic values, some Icelandic way of life. Uh, the Icelandic, the, the smell of Iceland, the, the, the salty smell from the sea that, that brings us everything that we live on. So it was something like that. Was it difficult? No, it was not. Juggling it isn't No, bad. no, 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 no. That's, that was fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was so fun detailed. Of it. Uh, yeah. Some of them must be based on your people, surely. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, uh, in Iceland, I would say no, because, <laughs> because everyone knows the stories and, and everyone knows someone and everyone is related to someone and and, uh, and they might get offended. Sure. Uh, but uh, I will tell you a secret now uh, and you <laughs> won't tell anyone in Iceland. <laughs> uh, many of those stories are based on... on on things I've heard and mm -hmm. things I've seen, and, mm -hmm. and uh, for example, this—I uh, don't know if you remember—there's a very strange priest mm -hmm. in this story. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually based on a priest that uh, that Jarsink. Um, uh, yes. Buried. Yeah, he buried uh, yeah, a cousin of mine, and uh, and he, he did it very badly. And he was in a small village in the country, and and and, uh, and then I heard his story that that he was uh, he was uh, he he had this addiction uh, mm -hmm. that everybody in the village knew about. <laughs> of course, everybody in in the village knows about everyone in the mm -hmm. village and, and yes. things like that. And, and but but uh, mostly, I made it up. Those, <laughs> those people. And um, I, mean, I think that came through as well. Whole whole books could be written about any one of mm -hmm. these characters. Yeah, yeah. So, do they appear in any other stories um, already, or or um, do you have any ideas for in the pipeline for them appearing? Or making a starring role in, a, in another novel. Or... Yes, uh, I, I might do that. But, but what what I plan to do, uh, what what I plan to do after this book was to write another book that was uh, with uh, thirty two stories. Uh, this is sixteen stories, and uh, and next I was going to do thirty two stories and and etc. etc. And and build a net, you know, uh, uh, and and and. In those 32 stories, it, it was supposed to be connection with all the people in, in, in those stories. And, mm. uh, but, but I never got around to that, uh, I, I, uh, you know, the, the parliament and, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then also, I, I, I wrote another book. Another book came into my head. I had to write that uh, before this one. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write it again. But, uh, but yes. Uh, I, 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 I might do that. Yeah. And um, the translation question, <coughs> given these array of characters, array of voices, how hard was it to kind of translate the different nuances in speech or to, to differentiate between them? How did you manage to do that, do you think? Because again, for us, it's seamless. Mm. But for you, there must have been some, well, I thought it was seamless, but for you, there must have been some consideration. Of, well, you know. it was so beautifully written that 
that, that always helps. If it's if a book is badly written, then it's really difficult to translate. Mm. Well written books are much easier to translate. Mm. Yes, the, yes. The, I mean, the characters came out yeah. the, the, in the Icelandic. The, the characters came out as yeah. very distinct people, mm -hmm. so that it was, I suppose, not too hard no. to 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 visualise the characters also, and make them. Also, don't, don't forget that I'm a trained actor. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I, I can't get into the head of a character and know how they speak. Mm. Mm. Okay, and um, on, on, Andre is a, is a translator himself, so how much did you refer to him, or did he let you get on with it, or did he want to be part of it, or how did that work? And also, how do you both work? Because yeah. you, you have learnt Icelandic, yes. you are native Icelandic speaker, you, you've yeah. learnt it. Yeah. So how did this all work, the three of you, I suppose? Well, first of all, we just translated it and then presented it, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's, you that's that. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes, um, well, when we translate together, I do the initial translation, I do it as well as I can, but come on, I'm not... A native English speaker, so I will. There will be ways that I say things that are not particularly English. Yeah. So, which means that when. And that, yeah, we work um, in different rooms in the house, <laughs> <laughs> uh, communicating with the telephone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, different floors. Different floors. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes, as Björk says, she starts it off, and I follow along, kind of a day behind. <laughs> working on what she did the day before um, and we occasionally phone each other and say <laughs> when you put this um, you know are you sure that's what's mm -hmm. meant and we have a bit of an argue about that or I say I can't think of that word and he say oh don't bother me now I'm doing something else just write something <laughs> <laughs> that's right. yes. Yes. sometimes that's like yes. that <laughs> so there's a lot of discussion that goes on between us and then did Andre Comment on anything, or want you to change anything, or suggest oh, suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we've done when we've done translation with with various authors, uh, you know, sometimes we've sort of sent regular consignments of, you know, we've got through a quarter of the book and we send it off. But um, not very often. Really. Not very often, no. But I think with you, we've just sent you the final product. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm I'm used to you know translators asking me what does this mean and what does this. Mean? Mm. And and I have to explain lots of things to translators uh, usually, but yes, of course. Uh, but that's our but, 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 that but, but Björk is Iceland, yes. so so she <laughs> so, so she understands everything that, that I'm, I'm I'm ready. So so you don't have to, didn't have to do this. No, that, that exactly. I'm, yeah. So but I'm surprised that translation doesn't follow this way more. I know they do a lot in. Arabic translation, they have someone who translates it and then someone who's who gives the nuances of, of what might help an English readership. I mean, I think a lot of translations should have have more than, you know, two of you mm. and, yeah. you know, the author as part of it. Um, money, I guess. Anyway, sorry, getting back to the book. <coughs> um, now, this question, I think, will... Um, I didn't know before that um, he's an MP, <laughs> but I think this question will um, interest you. Two characters who are perceived as failures are the priest, who you've already mentioned, who's not only a gambling addict, he's also an alcoholic, and his pseudonym is Buffed when logged into the online casino, and Lally Puffin. Now, Lally Puffin's a businessman whose various ventures all flopped except for the local restaurant. In his hands, everything withered. Mm. What are you trying to say about religion and business? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Lally well, well, the Puffin, he has, he, he has dementia. At the end, yeah. But the business beginning. failed before and, the and, purchase. And, 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 uh, and I, I, I really... I remember when I was writing about him, uh, I really didn't know what, uh, what, what would happen. You know, when you're writing and you don't know what's going to happen. And I was, you know, walking him through the village, you know, here and there. And, and I didn't really know what's, what would happen next. And then I suddenly realized what was going to happen. He was going to meet his sister, mm. his lifelong yeah. enemy, mm. and not recognize her. Yeah. Mm. 
that, that's what the, that story is about. Mm. Uh, uh, the, this uh, this poofed character, uh, it's a ridiculous name, I know, and it's a failed joke that no one understands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, not even myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it refers to a, a, a wise man in Iceland in, 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 the, in the 15th or or was it, yeah, it was in the 15th century, I think, Simon de Frodi, his name was. And uh, he... Simon de the Wise. Simon de the Wise. He went to France to study. And the Icelanders, uh, he, he, went to, uh, he went to study uh, in, you know the school? Sorbonne. Sorbonne, yeah, Sorbonne, <laughs> of course. Uh, and the Icelanders they called Sorbonne Svartiskoli, the black school. The black college. The yes. black college. And it was some sort of, they, they imagine he was uh, in some sort of Harry Potter situation. <laughs> and, uh, because they didn't know anything. About, they, they were very isolated at that time and didn't know anything about Europe. And so he was this learned man, uh, the, this wise man who was studying uh, at this black school. And, and the head of the school was the devil himself. That's what the people said. He was, he was studying with the devil. And, uh, and uh, uh, an, another Icelandic man came to Paris and he met him there. And Simon Dur had forgotten his name and, uh, and he, he thought... His, his own name. His own name, yes. Yeah. He thought his name was Buft. So that's... My joke. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, what are you saying about religion and business? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Come on, yeah. you must represent something. Yes, of course, of course. I, 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 uh, those are the figures of authority in 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 in, in the book. Yeah. That was ri written after the economic crash. Yes, it was the two major, major failures of the crash. Yeah, production. yeah, after the crash, you know. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, isn't it obvious yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, now, actually, in a way, these characters, for me, I really felt these glimpses of these lives, it was a means to give a compelling account of Iceland's recent history and some of the problems it faced um, and faces post-economic crash. Um, I know you were a journalist. I, I knew you were a journalist before. I now know you're an MP. Um, was this your intention? I mean, it seems to be a kind of post-crash novel. No, it was not. <laughs> uh, my, my intention was just writing this book that, that you know, I, I, I sensed this book in, in, inside my head and I started reading it, writing it and, and I enjoyed it tremendously, writing this book. And it was very easy for me to write this book. Uh, and and uh, actually, I, 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 I was not really a journalist. I was more of a, uh, I had this column, this weekly column in, 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 in one of Iceland's <coughs> newspapers. And, uh, uh, and there I just uh, wrote my opinions on, on anything. And uh, that, that, that was the beginning maybe of my political career. I, I've only been an MP for, now for one year, so so I'm not a, I'm not an old distinguished politician. Yes. Yet. Yet. Yes. Yes. But, so so, but but that has always been, you know, uh, uh, the 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 writer of novels and the poet is is one person, and the column writer is another person, and now the politician is the third person. The guitar player is the fourth person. <laughs> uh, actually, as Maker was saying, uh, we are 350,000 people. <laughs> uh, I think we are three, 320,000 without the police people. <laughs> uh, and we are very few people over there. But we, our society is, in a way, we pretend that we are a society of millions. <laughs> we are urban society, very modern or urban society of million people, at least, at least mm -hmm. may, may, maybe 20 million. <laughs> <laughs> and that, so, so each of us has to uh, do a lot of things. Yeah. We have to be many people, yeah. each of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the, 
I suppose the, it's, 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 it's good, good, good and bad. It's, yeah. it's bad because maybe we, we don't do anything very well, but we do a lot, lots of things um, <laughs> with our intuition and, uh, and uh, we, we improvise and uh, we, 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 we can do them fairly well and we have a lot of fun doing it. So uh, it's 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 really great in you know for for each individual in Iceland to have this space, yeah. have mm -hmm. all this space, because uh, I think space for for every individual and and for nations and and for for people in general is 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 a very precious thing. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. And again, we're gonna go. We're gonna build on that idea of Iceland and what so you know, remarkable about the country. And as far as I know, the Icelandic language is very, very old. And so um, can you talk a little bit more about that and um, the connection with the past, the fact that it's a very old language? And I'd like to know how easy was it to learn, Andrew? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just, just talk about that connection with the past. And then I understand, so some of the modern words have just have come out, you know, but but that it's rooted in a very centuries old language. Um, yeah, I guess I I benefited. The, the Icelandic um, is uh, because, as you say, it, it's a it's an old language, and because Iceland was uh, isolated for centuries, and literature was their main art form, the language hasn't developed the way its neighbouring languages have. Um, um, it is a very, what's the word, um, for a language where all, all the nouns and adjectives decline and all the verbs conjugate and you have to make the adjectives agree in case and gender with the nouns and so on. I always, I mean, I'm very fond of saying that my wife declines. <laughs> <laughs> she has an accusative case. <laughs> but I'd done the classics at school up to A level. And so the concept of, of declining nouns and adjectives and, and, and conjugating verbs and making adjectives agree with nouns and things was not new to me. I, I, I've got all that kind of superstructure in my head and it was simply a question of finding the new vocabulary to slot into that mm -hmm. um, but if you're coming from just an English speaker to learn it it's it it's probably quite complex mm -hmm. um, but I, I found it fascinating because um, the vocabulary was full of words that had a, a, a an archaic or a, a regional <laughs> uh, sense to them um, um, you know, words like Kirk. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, yeah. So and that connection and, here and, over and, Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Moose? Moose. <laughs> was it that connection to Scotland with Kirk? Church. Church. Same, it's the same word, church. But, but you'll find quite a few Scottish words mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Icelandic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And Yorkshire is full of them. Oh. Viking. Yeah. Viking. Viking. Yes. Yeah. Icelandic is really not far removed from Old Norse. Ah. Yeah, the way well, we speak it. Actually, uh, his name is Andrew and my name is Andre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a coincidence. It's, mm. it's because the, the, there are many, many similarities between English What's and Andrew? Icelandic. Andrew. We have lots Andrew. of Andrew. words, ah, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, 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 yeah. so, it's very easy for us, you know, to to adapt English words into Icelandic, into modern Icelandic, and and we do do that a lot uh, nowadays. But, but, but having said that, we yeah. also it was this committee who was. Had, whose job it was to invent new Icelandic yeah, words for yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we, we, television and computer. We have Icelandic words for uh, computer, that's uh, Kalva. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, well, it's complicated. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, uh, telephone, it's simi. It's, 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 it's red. Yeah, it's a very, very old yeah. word. Yeah. 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 And, and, so, yeah. and, 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 and the beauty in this is, is that when you, are, when, you, when, you, when you make a new word about a new thing, a new phenomenon in your life, you have to understand it. You have to understand how it works. And, and, and you do, and w the Icelanders, they do that with the language. They use the language to understand the, 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 the modern phenomena. Andrew's favorite word in Icelandic is skruðdreki. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Tank. For a military tank. A military tank. tank. Yeah. Skrudek, which means a crawling dragon. It sounds like an Indian, uh, yeah. Indian name. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you have been to Iceland? Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. yeah. mm -hmm. It's it is an unforgettable landscape, and mm. you've touched upon it. But what role did landscape mm. play in in the book? Uh, well. Uh, in almost, I suppose. Uh, uh, I, uh, but. Uh, yeah. to. No, no, I'm just giving him my paper. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, it's okay. Uh, actually, uh, my my father was a writer also. By the name of Thor Williamson, he was a very well-known writer in Iceland, and uh, and he wrote uh, very. He, he, he was a very modernistic uh, writer in, in <coughs> he, he wrote you know books a little bit, a bit like uh, the, the French you know the the, the new uh, novel in, in French in the, in the 60s and the 70s and um, he wrote very very long uh, descriptions of nature very specific and very long maybe maybe for five or ten pages, just nature descriptions. And I got a bit tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I, and and, and I'm, I'm really not very much into that myself. So, so I don't write very much about the nature, but, but it, of course, affects everything I write. And it, of course, affects how I feel every day. And, and affects uh, and it, it has made me the Icelandic nature has made us all the Icelanders uh, how we are in a way and was the great poet that appears briefly in the the, the novel was that a homage to your father yes it was yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I really just made that connection because yeah, yeah. he's so beautifully yeah. and then but then the sun is in the is in the novel out on the Cliff tops trying to create, or not the cliff tops, the, he's out in the wild mm. trying to create. Yeah, he's, he's trying to. Try and see you then? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no okay. it, it, it's, it, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, but, 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 excuse me, uh, you were talking about the language. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'd like to tell you a little bit about that because you, you were re refer referring to Old Norse. Uh, Old Norse is basically Icelandic. It's, it's the Icelandic language. The, the Icelandic language is the, it's the original Nordic language. We preserved it in Iceland. Uh, at one time, this language, this Nordic language, was uh, the, the, they, they used it all over Scandinavia and also here in England, the Vikings. This was the, 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 the language of the Vikings. And we preserved it in Iceland, and, and that was just because we were so isolated <coughs> from, from other European nations. The, the, the Danish and the, the Swedes, especially, they were so close to the Germans, and they got, their language got so affected by the German. So that's, that's, why, that's the reason why their language is, is a little bit uh, different than, than ours. So, they have always uh, <laughs> held the Icelanders in in, 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 in a way in, in high esteem for, for, for doing that, uh, for, for uh, preserving this language. And, and the, 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 the Danish and the Swedes, they, they have, <coughs> and, the, and the Norwegians, they, they've looked at Iceland as 
I thought there's a, a, a little bit like uh, the noble savages of, <laughs> the, yes. of, of the north. So then they understand it. Yes. They, they don't no, understand they don't it. No, no, no. no. It's no. Yeah, so yeah. It would yeah. be like if Chaucer came in the room and started okay. talking to you. You might pick up the odd word. Yeah, but yeah. It would be, lost yeah, there. but 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 I. Uh, if, if, if Chaucer had been an Icelander yeah. and had been ri writing yeah. in Icelander, I, I could, I can easily read it. Yeah. 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 But but I would not understand sure. a, a person from that yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Music, um, obviously a central theme in the novel, uh, and some of your characters bond through music. But what is this its significance, and is there a connection with the oral? telling tradition in Iceland? I mean, it's just a question coming out of the blue, but anyway, just talk about the importance briefly of, of music in your, yes. In your novel. Yes, yes. Uh, this is really two questions, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, maybe not. Uh, I think it all began with music. It all began with, uh, I heard I heard the sound in my head, uh, uh, some sort of music in my head, and, and it was in Walt's time. Uh, the, the Icelandic name of the book is Valera Valsin, the, the Valley of Walt's. And, uh, and uh, I heard this Walt's in my head, and it turned into this book. Uh, when I write, I, I always use music, I always listen to music. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and it's very important for me. Uh, uh, I, I listen to music every day, uh, I, uh, and uh, I, I I wouldn't be able to create anything without music. Um, the oral tradition. <laughs> uh, that that's, that's another story. Uh, it, 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 we have this great tradition in Iceland that. Uh, Maybe maybe it's uh, with, with the phones and, and the iPads uh, it's and, and things like that. It, it might be disappearing, I don't know. But we have this great tradition that uh, uh, we, we, we sit in the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is, is, is in all Icelandic homes, it's, it's the main place. And there we sit in the kitchen and we tell stories uh, the whole night. And 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 we tell stories of it, of uh, our ancestors and and maybe people we we, we heard of 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 known people. Uh, we 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 tell stories about ourselves, and uh, most of the, most of those stories are uh, fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so so we 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 are we are all poets in in in, in that in that way. Uh, and, uh, but are you bonding like you bond through music? I mean, is yeah. there that connection? Cause, yeah, yeah. Because they are storytelling, but there's also this theme of music is running throughout the whole novel. And yeah. The solace of music, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that's And just true. as you mentioned the title, I do have a question for Maike, who I believe Parini changed the title, so can you give us the reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I'm yeah. this I blame it on the time. Germans actually this time um, <laughs> because the German. So I read this book in in German first, and um, the title in German. In den Wind geflüstert. Ah, in den Wind geflüstert to uh, to be whispered into the wind. Uh, I mean, the Germans can deal with passives like the English can't. So that's um, that's basically where this idea, I, I really love the title in German, but we realized quickly we can't really do this in English. So I think the three of us were playing around with the wind and then you came up with a few suggestions. Um, and that's, yeah. I think the walls, the Valerian walls. Um, so it's about the region or the, this yeah. refers to the yeah. region, yeah. yeah. The Valerie Walsh. Yeah, that yeah. refers to the, the, and I just thought it's harder for an English readership. Well, yeah, it doesn't conjure up anything. Um, yeah. well, for the I, English, I although the, it would for, for Icelandic, because it's the idea of the north-south divide, is very yeah. strong as well. Yeah, we, we also have this strange tra tradition in, in, in Iceland in some ways. We have the the the, the, the walls of the, the haddock, the, the walls of, of the herring. 
and the walls of uh, of this place and the walls of that place and, and it, it referred to that so so I, I think that Icelanders they they, they they hear something when, when they when they see this title is, is this wrong no no they're seeking somebody thought maybe we should call, have called it the village walls Okay, question for all of you. Do good Icelandic tales always need a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Do they? But you're Icelandic, you grew up with tales. Yes. But, I mean, obviously, I've only read it what, what I can get in English translation, but. Ghosts and trolls and that the, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. The, the, the landscape with yeah. with those kind of craggy lava outcrops kind of they they demand that you imagine strange <laughs> trolls and creatures Do you lurk, know? lurking there in in, in the, the dim winter light. You know. When I came over here, well, to to live here, uh, it dawned on me. Uh, having experienced that, uh, you know, an English winter for the first time, mm. suddenly it dawned on me why, out in the countryside, why people believed in witches riding on broomsticks and things because of the trees and the, the mm. silhouetted yeah. against the skin. And then I understood why we had trolls because yeah. of, as I say, you know, there are these pictures and the, the lava and the rocks you see, you notice you see the faces yeah. and yeah. they are there. Mm. So, yeah. imagination, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, mm. But but the Icelanders they, they they really do believe in ghosts. But then we have the, the elves as well. Yeah. <laughs> they also But the Icelanders they hate talking about elves, you know. <laughs> and 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 they pretend that they don't believe in elves. <laughs> no no, we're all grown up here. We we, we don't believe in elves. <laughs> but but when they're in their kitchen <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, only with their families, they, they ta start telling stories of elves yes, and, yeah, and, and ghosts yeah. and, and things like that. Well, yes. even now, I mean, really. Seriously. Even now, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, okay. and especially ghosts. Uh, we have all our ancestors with us. They're, they're on my back, <laughs> <laughs> crawling all over me. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, qu another quick question before I open it up. Hope is another theme. And I felt that the polka dot dress Kata wears signifies yeah. hope. Yeah. Um, the hope that she once felt that yeah. she would marry Andreas, yeah. and the hope she feels at the end. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a beautiful that's a, that's a beautiful thought. <laughs> um, of course, there the, there is not going to be any any concert. The, the mm. choir won't be singing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's true. Yeah. You forget that. Yeah, because one one main character in the choir dies yeah. in, 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 the, in the in the book. But she's full of hope. She's full of hope. And she yeah. deserves it. Oh yes, yeah, she does. Mm. And the soup Indeed. is cooking, and they're not going to go and eat the soup or dance mm. in the kitchen. Or... No, no. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. But Soup sounded lovely. <laughs> I want the recipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you all the rest. Of the rest of yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's open it out. I'm sure there's lots of questions. Um, there's one here. When you were talking about music, uh, first of all, I absolutely love the book. Thank you. And um, it's the book that I've read that even though I'm not musical, it made me think of a symphony throughout, as if each chapter or each person was a different musical instrument. Yeah. And there was different themes of the sound of the motorboat and the lawnmower. Yeah, yeah. And they kept coming. Yeah. But then there will be different major or minor chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. just didn't know if that was what you were thinking, that it all... Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was definitely trying to do something like that. Mm. Also... Uh, I, I, I used to sing in a choir. Uh, I'm, I'm not m much of a musician myself, but just, just, you should know that. Uh, <laughs> although I play the guitar, I'm just, uh, it's very, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very bad. You're a bad, kitchen guitarist. Right? Yeah, I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm a kitchen guitarist. And, uh, but, but, but uh, I, I used to sing in a choir and I, I used to sing Bach mm. in a choir. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I used to sing all those things. I'm, I'm talking about in Bruckner and, and, 
mm. and things like that. And and, and <coughs> what I loved in 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 that was you know having my voice blend into a, a, a bigger sound uh, or that you know people like we are sitting here all are making together and, and it, it just one mm. one sound that we make all together mm. and uh, the valerie sound yeah the valerie sound yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and maybe that's what i'm trying to do in with with this cycle of stories. Maybe and like the more that. I hear from you actually this, this evening, the more I think there's little bits of you in all these characters. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning yeah. to think. Yeah. 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 Uh, also the priest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what we get to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a question over here. Yeah. Um, well, again, I, I love the book and uh, I am a musician. And for me, it was like, um, Really, you say there was a concert, but it was a bit like it, it was actually they were singing, mm -hmm. you know, the individual voices that blended. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that when I sat, we sat down next to each other, and we both almost simultaneously said, "This book reminds me of Underwolf Milkwood." Yep. Yes. Yes. Sort of, yes. Yes. And I have to say, you know, I, it makes me wonder whether you know that book yeah, not. because mm -hmm. because that's a book that that sort of demands to be you know, read aloud. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think your book yeah. would be such fun to, you know, have to, to, to get some wine and, and sort of meet with friends and actually take on different characters and <laughs> yeah. speak the parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the music and the, the thing that this, uh, this other person was saying about the repetition, you know, the yeah. rhythms yeah. Of, and the, and the I, I love the way you keep saying the same yeah. thing yeah. within, on you know, you keep repeating phrases that come yeah. back mm. and back, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I have to say, I thought it was so good. Uh, I, I, it's a bit of a cliche. People, you read reviews and people say, I just wanted to read it all over again. But actually, I did. I just wanted to go back to the beginning mm. Thank you very much. and start all over again. Well, you need to read it again. Yeah. I read it three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank, really thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's uh, it's humbling for me to 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 w w that that you men mention Dylan Thomas and, and I, of course I love Dylan Thomas and, and uh, all his work. Um, I've got a question about the past and the future. <clears throat> so this is a factual question in a way. So obviously Iceland, in terms of people, relatively new country because you you know it was only populated about nine hundred AD. Yeah, you've got some <laughs> so when you when all these stories you all tell later yeah, tonight yes. about the, the elves and the trolls and so on, are they ancestors in other words that could only have been there for the last one thousand one hundred years, which by your consensus is new? Or are they predecessors that were there before you all turned up speaking the <laughs> 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 future is <clears throat> to me, despite the economic <laughs> crisis you had uh, and, and the problems of addiction in the story and one or two, I think there's three or four losers actually. Um, it seemed, it did seem you were vaguely po more positive and negative about your country's future, it seemed to me, and you were affirming, despite the death and everything else and the civility. Is that your outlook going forward? You do feel more on the, you know, the seesaw tip towards positivity and negativity? Because that's what came across to me with the words, the children on the trampolines and the sort of regular noise. It was life moves on kind of thing. Yeah. So it's all past and future there, if you can answer both yeah. questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are very interesting <laughs> questions. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I have the answers. Uh, the 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 elves and, and 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 the trolls and and you know this this animism that that it's it's it has been in the Icelandic uh, Christianity, we might say. Since we became Christians, around thousand, uh, the year thousand, this is more of an animism that uh, it, it, it maybe it's not the spirit of the ancestors; it's the spirit of the nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, itself. Yeah. Uh, the nature itself is alive, and it's uh, not only alive. Uh, the Icelandic nature, we, 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 we tend to uh, experience it as a person, 
us, yeah. us. We, we we have this living thing. Uh, yeah, a, 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 a person. We have this concept in 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 Iceland. Uh, we call it Fjallkona, the 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 mountain woman, and yeah. she is uh, she, she resembles Iceland. We talk about Fjallkona, uh, uh, and we we must love the Fjallkona and and uh, she is in a way our mother uh, she is feminine uh, Iceland nature we 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 tend to look at it at as, as feminine and uh, and uh, it is it can be hostile it can be very hostile it can uh, it, uh, we, we die in it and it can also be uh, very gentle and very giving. It gives us everything, also. But it's unpredictable, all this. We don't know what's going to happen next, uh, next week or, or tomorrow. Uh, just these days, our biggest volcano, called Katla, is uh, maybe mm. moving. We, 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 we see some, uh, it, it might be erupting in, in a few days and, and no one knows what happens when it erupts. It's, it's, it's enormous, it can be enormous. So we have, we, 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 live in, we live in this hostile, gentle, loving, hating <laughs> nature. <laughs> and, uh, it defines us very much, how we are and who we are. Even though we are, we mustn't forget. We we, we, we don't. We are not hobbits. We we, we don't live in hobbits. You know, in, in, in the nature we live in. Most of us live in Reykjavik, in in, in, the, in the big city. But uh, we are. Uh, nevertheless, we are children of nature. I think. Uh, the other question, you put, what was that? The future, so you know, yeah, the well, yeah, 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 the future. Well, aside from Katla, I'm, 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 I'm optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and was it not Katla? What was it that you told us yesterday? Yeah. So yeah. that when, uh, so Katla caused the French Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I no, that, oh, yeah, no, well, no, no, it was not Katla, really, no, it was No, it was an uh, eruption in, in Iceland in, 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 the, in the 18th century. It was 1783. Uh, there was an enormous <coughs> eruption in Iceland and, and, and a great famine. We, we, we were almost extinct. It was, it was the great Icelandic famine, and our famine was. <laughs> Greater than any other nation, <laughs> uh, and the, 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 there have been some theories that that there was so much ash mm -hmm. that came from Iceland all over Europe, mm -hmm. and it spilled the, the, the crop. Mm -hmm. And there have been some theories linking that mm -hmm. to the French Revolution, mm -hmm. and and the, that was caused also mm -hmm. by by famine. In, in, in France, so everything is related. The the books of Alan Garner. Can you speak up a bit? Sorry. Sorry. Um, the books of Alan Garner uh, were triggered by the thought that you've just been mentioning about um, the capacity for the landscape to uh, harbour <laughs> spirit. And goblins and 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 he seems to successfully oscillate in quite a few of his books between a very very long and distant past that's almost unidentifiable by year and 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 the present. Um, Do you know Alan Garner? No, I don't. Okay. No. Uh, Sorry, you might. Ch uh, he, it's interesting because he he, yeah. he he is probably best known in the UK as a as a children's mm -hmm. author. Yeah. But in fact, many of his books are for very adult children, yeah, yeah. Um, and he and his the, the names he uses draws very much. It, it it would appear on 
um, Icelandic or Nordic yeah, or yeah. Scandinavian uh, culture. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know that uh, Tolkien, he, he yes. drew uh, mm. very yeah. much on, on similar, similar kind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Sorry, not a question, three comments. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? I have one last question before we do a reading, because I can, I can smell the brew, the right wing brew. <laughs> <laughs> um, why should we, and this is for all of you, why should we read Icelandic fiction? Obviously, <laughs> why should we read it? Because it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> why is it fantastic? And what do you mean by fantastic in a literal sense or yeah. <laughs> terrific? Yes and yes. Both. Yeah. 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 Mm. Gosh. Or any authors, uh, you know, sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, but any authors you'd recommend that are being translated? Some of you may have read Sean, who worked with Björk. Um, but why do you think we should read Icelandic fiction and anyone you would suggest we should be reading other than this wonderful writer? If, if, if I will try to answer this. <laughs> it's a difficult question. Uh, why should we read Icelandic literature? Why should we read any literature? Uh, just I guess I'm asking you for the three minute yeah. elevator pitch. Yeah. You, you, you come across that if you're pitching a film, yeah. you, you have three minutes in which you can say why this film should be made. There are, there why should we read Icelandic yeah, we, literature? Because there are ghosts and horses in it. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. No. No. Uh, and the landscape. Yeah. There, there, there are there are some. I think. I, I think Icelandic literature is a bit special, like maybe all literature is <laughs> in a way special. <laughs> but but uh, Icelandic literature is special in in an Icelandic way. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Iceland is, like no other country uh, in Europe at least, uh, because uh, we, 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 we have developed uh, a culture that, that's a, a strange blend of things, of European influences and, and our isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so, so maybe we, we, we tend to uh, uh, think in a uh, some sort of other way than, than other uh, other nations uh, around us. Uh, authors, you you you're asking about authors. I'm I'm trying to think of some author that you should read rather. You than mentioned me. the the butterflies. <laughs> Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, actually, I can re recommend uh, uh, Sion, you, that she mentioned, mm -hmm. and also I can re recommend. I know that uh, it has been translated into English. That's a wonderful book by by a, a good friend of mine. She, we were at school together. <laughs> uh, she still looks like she's thirty <laughs> uh, or twenty. Uh, her name is Öður Ava. Olafsdóttir and and her book uh, it's uh, it's called uh, Tulips in November. But, I thought it was butterflies. Butterflies, butterflies in November. And it's published by Pushkin Press. Yeah, mm -hmm. butterflies. Yeah. I don't know why I call it tulips well, in November. It's better. Mine's better. Yes. Isn't it better? Yeah, it is. I thought it was more tree. The Icelandic. The, uh, sorry, the the, the Icelandic uh, uh, title is Rigning in November, Rain in November. Oh. Why should we eat foreign food? Why should we eat Italian or French food or Indian Absolutely. or whatever? Yeah. It's because you get new flavors and, and, and yeah. it opens yeah. up different yeah. senses and, and mm. everything. And riches. Yeah. 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 Andrew, do you want to add anything? Well, I, I mean, I always go back to laxness. It's very um, unique, though. Yeah. Yes, independent people, and my favourite, Sofka Vodka, but um, yeah. Well, because, yeah. I mean, um, Icelandic films are making a huge inroads at the mm. moment, and so is literature. I think they're both really exciting. I love both. We were talking about some films earlier, and uh, really do look out for them. Um, we're going to finish with a reading, and this time we're going to start with the English.
yeah. and finish with that beautiful Icelandic <laughs> voice. Uh, I, I could see everyone was like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, our last reading. Yes. Thank you. So this is all about ghosts again, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> I'll stop. She'd been woken up by somebody whispering her name ever so quietly. She opened her eyes wide and heard her name whispered again. She couldn't see anyone. She couldn't hear any sounds of sleep coming from her friend's bedroom. Couldn't hear the humming of the fridge or any of the sounds that had sent her to sleep, apart from the ticking of the grandfather clock. She looked around the room and the room felt odd. Was she still asleep? She closed her eyes and dozed for a while till a gust of cold wind on her face startled her out of her slumber. She looked around the room. The wood panelling on the walls had been replaced by threadbare, rose-patterned wallpaper. The blue chest of drawers in the corner was gone and in its place stood a chair with a shabby red upholstery. Sitting in it, cross-legged, was a young woman, slim, with long, tangled hair. She was staring straight through Auster. She wore a tight-fitting dark blue dress and gave off a strong whiff of the sea. Auster could neither go back to sleep nor get up. She couldn't utter a sound. Eventually, she managed to tear her eyes away from the young woman and look towards the door. It stood open, admitting a faint light. She was sure that she'd shut the door before going to bed. The clock struck three. The floor was covered with what seemed to be drab, worn lino. She glanced at the chair again. The young woman had disappeared, but the smell was just as strong as before. She could hear the cries of Arctic terns. Hún vaknaði við að nafnið hennar var Kvísla of Lát. Hún klemmt upp augun og heyrði nafnið sitt Kvísla aftur. Hún sá engan. Hún heyrði engin svefljóð í hjónunum frammi. Hún heyrði ekki suðu í ískáttnum. Hún heyrði ekkert á hljóðunum sem hún sopnaði út frá nema tefið í borgundarhólmsklukkunni. Hún leit í kringum sig og henni fannst herbergið ankannalegt. Svaf hún enn? Hún lokaði aftur augunum og blundaði á nýjum stund þegar hún fann skyndilega kaldan gust á andliti sér og rökk aftur. Hún leit í kringum sig. Panillinn á veggjunum var horfin en í staðin komin skerplótt og rósminnst fyrir veggfóður. Bláa kommóðun í horninu var horfin en í staðin komin rauðu stóll með slitnum áklæðum. Í honum sat manneskja. Þetta var ung kona með sítt hár í flækju. Hún var grannvaksin með krosslaða fótleggi og orði beitt í gegnum ástu. Hún var í dökkbláum aðskortum kjól og það var af henni sterk sjávarlegt. Ástakað hvorki lagst aftur niður til að reyna að sopna nýstaðið og fætur. Hún gat ekki komið upp hljóði. Henni tókst að slíta augun af ungu konunni og leit fram. Dyrnar voru opnar og döf skýma frammi. Borgundarhólmsklukkan sló þrjú högg. Hún hafði lokað að sér áður en hún fór að sofa. Það mundi hún. Hún sá ekki betur en á gólfinu var í slitinn drapplitur dúkur. Hún lét augun hvarla aftur að stólnum í horninu. Unga konan var horfin en lyktin var megg sem fyrr. Hún heyrði kríum. Þetta. readings here but it's, it's never been as beautiful as Icelandic I can't have a feeling I don't know if it's just uh, my German feeling, but <laughs> anyway thank you so much it was a fantastic conversation thank you Lucy and the, um, uh, 
and Andrew. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, Bjork, and Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> yet for mm -hmm. the next year or haven't in fact if your subscription is running out and you haven't um, <laughs> gone on to a uh, direct debit um, <laughs> please do downstairs <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs>